Hello friends and welcome back to Animal Crossing! I am Peachy Lamy here on YouTube and today we are back on my elegant Regency Core Island of Pemberley. We've hit three stars and have had KK join us so I'm finally into designing which I've definitely been waiting for. It's my favorite part of creating islands these days. Today we're going to be working on the main town as well as the entrance for the island so let's get right into it. So I wanted to share with you guys my process of picking some custom designs for this island. A lot of these from this particular creator I used on Amberino and then I wanted to find a some sort of different grass type to be able to put in some of the areas of the hedge mazes and then I found this one creator that I was thinking about using some of the cobblestone from. Um, I don't know if I ended up using anything from this creator, but they had a lot of options, including that beautiful flower path that I wanted to share with you. So hopefully this will give you some ideas if you're doing a spring elegant core vibe. This creator as well has curtains and stuff like that that I thought was really nice and useful for later. Um, and then I loved their cobble that I ended up using for most of the paths on this island definitely did use a bunch of those but they have so much to offer so I just wanted to share with you some of the looks that I found here and this is a path I really love the grass bricks I'm going to use this a lot in this build as just to add some variety of stonework so let's get right into the actual building before we get any further, I wanted to show you guys the island design slash plan again that I shared a few videos ago just to give you an idea of what I'm currently working on. So the area around resident services is what I'm setting up which will lead to the entrance to the airport. Today we'll be finishing the entrance and the rest will be kind of a work in progress. I'm laying out the pathways and sections so I can visualize it better. I wanted to do like four spaces for the pathway just so that I could do a two square path that's bordered on either side help give it that little elegant look we've been going for. I also wanted to have some green and garden patches evenly around resident services so that's what I'm trying to do with these empty spaces around it. So this right here, this long line, is going to be the path to the airport just kind of laying it out for myself. Um, we're going to fit the entrance somewhere in this group but we still have to have the pathway attached so nothing symmetrical in this game, you know how this works. So I have to try my best and do what we can with two spaces against three spaces that's always my problem but um, I think I did decent enough in the long run but we have to start off with a two square path and then we branch off to extend the road I have this one grass block in between the pathways right now just because I wanted to show some separation of the path versus like a courtyard so that will go away pretty soon once I actually get the custom designs going but it was just for my mental sanity to see where things were separated so this little spot will be a house plot eventually um the duke of cheese is going to live here kind of like a mansion vibe but i was looking at medieval vibes in a way at least the tudor style housing that was what i had in mind and there's miss pecan being all fancy and cute and so these are my little spaces that i'm leaving outside of resident services to have some trees and shrubbery and greenery just to add something else besides pathways around it i thought it was a nice touch and I really am wanting to keep everything as even as possible and the same as much as we can just because I think it kind of unifies it all. And then here we are starting up the border that I'm including throughout the pathways of this island, at least for the village area. These are the same borders I used for Amberino so definitely uh, check out the creator I showed at the beginning of this video if you would like to use them on your island. Um, I really like the way it looks just because it's it's a nice sidewalk but for the road I guess is technically what it is. I started off with this cobblestone and I wasn't really sold on it yet so I ended up going with one of the 
pathways that I had used on Amberino. But then as I was working on that, I do leave it for a bit just because I wasn't sure what to replace it with. But I got to a point where I'm like, this is looking just like Amberino and I don't want that. I want this to be different and unique but I still wanna use the sidewalk slash borders that I've been using because I think it just adds to the elegance and the time period. So I just need to find something else to fill a road. And now we're using a different style to kind of separate the pathway from the courtyard of the house that's going to go here and that blank spot up there. Um, this path had almost like a, f not a sorry, a flower bed, but uh, just a sectioned off area where you could put like bench or street lamps or something. And I wanted to make it a little tree bed, I guess, not a flower bed, but a tree bed um, where we have the tree in the middle and maybe have um, park benches on either side. That was the thought I had, and it would be a nice little sectional between the road and the uh, courtyard. And this is our current look right now. I realized that I wanted to have the corners, so I went ahead and downloaded the corners because it's so much to use for the path, but I think it was worth it to really make the look more finished because it's kind of blocky without it. And now we are finally adding in the trees. I love, love, love the trees. I, I need so many trees on this island. I haven't cut a single tree down since playing on Pemberley. I will need to start cutting down soon because the peach trees are taking over a section of my island that I need to work on next. So that'll be something. I got to figure out how to utilize some of the peach trees as well because I don't want it to just be the hardwood and cedars, even though it is usually my preference. But I do think the peaches are also kind of elegant in their own right and I would like to include them a little bit. And so this is the cobblestone I decided to work with for this pathway. I think it looks very nice. It's very similar to the um, stonework that's in the little tree bed to the left, but I think it was different enough to where it just felt new and it was not at all the same of Amberino. That was my goal. And so of course still using our stone and iron fencing, but I really want to utilize the hedges more so for this island just because we are going for the elegant hedge mazy vibe. And then of course we have our beautiful white street lamps and they look so good. And then we're going to add some round topiaries to kind of just add on to the beautiful squares that we have here. And these triangle topiaries are meant to like show the entrance to that courtyard. And we're wrapping up with our hedges. We'll continue this pattern throughout um, the resident services area, but just to give you an idea of the pattern I've been using, this is alternating with um, showing off the flowers through behind the stone and iron fencing, which is why that's in the middle, because if you put the hedge in front of the flowers, you'll never see them, and which is why I end up actually taking out these shrubs, because the hedges will block them and we will never see them, so I may put a custom design down or maybe even some other object to decor in the middle, but I haven't decided yet for now I left them alone and I think they look nice either way and now we're doing the same thing at the front of resident services I did shrink them a little bit in size because I, I don't know I felt like it was just gonna throw everything off and take away a whole block from the entrance eventually so I thought it made sense just to make it a little little smaller in the front but still the same vibe we just won't have that extra rose in the back of the flower bed and now we fill it in with the random stone it looks so so good wrapping up here i'm still figuring out what to do in like that big open area in the corner on the right but i haven't decided yet um probably some benches that's my assumption but i need to think of maybe like a market stall or something in those corners because there's going to be one on either side so maybe it could add a little bit to the island to being not just this garden you know entrance and town but more like a lively place where you can get stuff and shop you know, I think that's kind of something I need to consider. So it's not just constant hedge mazes. <laughs> I added in the columns and I think they were a really nice touch. I'm not fully sold on it, but I think it looks nice for the meantime, just to add something a little different for the squares I have going on here. And now we're working on the entrance. I started the pathway before I had set record. So I apologize for already being a little bit ahead of it. I wanted to use the same stone work we used in the courtyard, just ahead of 
of this entrance over there you over yonder and uh, I really think it looks beautiful with the shape of the fountain and just kind of giving it a little extra detailing by having it be layered in with the bricks surrounding the cobblestone work and then the fountain and the leaves of course the little leaves I think it looks just really intricate and very nice perfect for this elegant garden core vibe we are going for and there is our initial square I think I end up just using hedges to surround it I did consider like continuing this to make it an even bigger square and add the border of the edges but it just didn't work in this situation so I used the edged um, patterns for the little pathways instead of doing it around the big square if I'm making any sense now adding in our beautiful hedges because I did want this entrance in this front section of the town to be a garden not the full hedge maze we're gonna have by the museum nothing too difficult I think it's very simple to replicate if you guys want to for your islands and I think it could work for other types it doesn't have to be an elegant core Regency Island it could be a summer garden core it could be anything you want it to be I think always to remember like ideas for entrances can be swapped out with other items like if you like the symmetry of it you like the fountain in the middle or you can change the fountain to being a statue or just something totally different or change the flowers to bushes you know or change the different type of fencing like there's so many options when making and building in this game that i want you guys to always think about when you see these videos and this is our build in the evening i really like the way it looks i appreciate the um street lamps glow i need to do more obviously here with with our courtyard but I think the resin services looks very nice and very clean very cute and we're starting up again with the custom designs once again we are looking for a dirt path so this path that I'm looking at right now was the path I used on evergreen for the original garden of hedges that I fell in love with and inspired me to do this island in the first place so I was hoping they would have a grass version of this path but the creator did not so I got very bummed. Um, so I tried to find something that was close to it. And this is, you know, the typical path people use on their islands for like nat natural core or just overgrown vibes. And I wasn't fully sold on it because I wanted a more gravel vibe. I didn't want it to be a solid path. I wanted to be able to see grass underneath it. But I did find from Colin this amazing uh, kind of gravel path that he uses. I will use that later, but I wanted to save his uh, dirt path for now. But this is gonna want this road is a sneak peek to the path I'm gonna use for Pemberley. I'm very excited. And this next creator had just a green grass path, which I wanted to try out because it looked like it, you could see the other grass from underneath it. So I wanted to give it a go. Off the bat, I already thought it was just too blended in, and I'm curious how. It'll affect, you know, as the green gets a little more bluey green as you get deep in the summer. I'm curious how that looks because this could be a good spring grass path. So keep this in mind. I'm already, I'm trying to showcase all these instead of just showing you the one I picked because I wanted you guys to see some ideas in case you need something for your islands in the spring. So I liked it, but it was a little too just hidden for me. I wanted it to be pretty obvious that it was a path where we were going. I wanted to see what the beautiful snow path looked like, so I went ahead and implemented it for a moment, but it's obviously too snowy for this island. So I tried this other creator that I found, everything I found on Pinterest, and they had a couple options. But um, this one with a flower on the edge I thought might be cute. So I went ahead and gave it a try and I felt like it was just too much of a border. But really cute for spring core. For other people, you never know. I just wanted to share it with you because I did think it was very cute, but just not for what I wanted. And now we are back to another creator I found that I end up going with. They have a grass path and a dirt path that really has like holes in the path, basically, that you can see the grass underneath. Using their darker green path, it was closer to what I was looking for because the path is a little more obvious than the lime, limey greenish color that I had. But I decided that this brown was the perfect one because you could have a lot of grass coming through underneath 
and you could obviously see the path that was there. I'm pretty sure I used this path on Wind Lake way back in the day, um, so it's fun that it has made a resurgence on my island, um, but I think it works really well. It's not, it's still not exactly what I was hoping for and what I had in mind, but it's close enough and it's very cute. So I'm making some seating areas within this garden and expanding the path to kind of just show that people have walked there a little more often than usual. And then further down, I wanted to make another gazebo spot, but I wanted to use a custom path to make a proper like place underneath it and not just have it be grass underneath. And I thought these tiles looked really good with the blue roofed uh, gazebo. So I'm really excited about this. I think it looks really cute. I combined the sidewalk edges with the stairs to surround it and going in with a pattern of hedges, um, try to have one space in between. And now we're using that greenery path I talked about just to change up the grass in these gardens because the main grass is just there and I think it's kind of nice to have a change of pace with it. It's not my favorite but I think it blends in pretty good with this time of year so I'm going to run with it until it's very obviously not part of the grass. I think it looks really good. I think we're on our way. Everything looks very elegant and fresh and different than I've done before so I'm curious how I'm going to be able to translate a spring vibe into um, evergreen, you know, because this is very springy and gardeny, and I'm curious how evergreen is going to look in the spring when we get to that island. And I'm including the cedar trees, so we're officially symmetrical on either side, and I really think it flushed out this entrance really well. Fills it in and makes you feel like it's kind of a woodsy vibe, but also just, oh, it's beautiful. I love it so much. Again, very simple, very easy. And just for giggles, if you guys um, are counting the spaces like I am for entrances these days, this was a 11 if you count the border on the front side, at least 10 spaces to fill this area. So if you have 10 spaces, you can do this too. So just keep that in mind. We did this in 10 spaces or less. And that is it for today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it and got some inspiration and are excited to see how we continue on Pemberley here. While I was building these two areas, I was also working on the actual Pemberley with the lake and everything. I didn't want to include it here because I'm hoping to make it as its own video, but there's also not a ton to explain with that build. So I don't know if it'll be able to be its own standalone video, but I wanted it to be. So I didn't want to include it here just in case I can figure it out. But if I can't, we might have a short Pemberley build video at some point coming up soon. This video comes out two weeks before I go on my month long work trip. So I'm trying to create videos in the next couple weeks so that you guys have something to watch while I'm gone. I want to make sure we have a video going up at least once a week. I may take a couple weeks after my work trip to just recoup. So um, if you we do miss a couple videos in March, I'm sorry, but I need to be able to start up a new backlog of videos for you guys so I can be able to post. I just want to clarify that I may be transitioning from a once a week to whenever I can post sort of thing just for the time being because things are getting crazy with work and I'm doing my best to keep up with it. Thank you guys for all your support. It really means so much. And if you did enjoy the video and are enjoying the Pemberley series, please remember to give this video a big thumbs up and consider subscribing so we can notify the next time I post and joining us on that road to 20k. I love y'all so much. Hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you next time. Bye!